here. Uh, Nicki Minaj and Kevin Samuels. Man is for niggas, aka dudes who need dads. Let's talk about it. Ooh. get with black women. And that's the outcome we're getting. It ain't pretty. Sometimes it ain't pretty. Can I say something? Can I say something real quick? Black women, can y'all, can y'all, can we, can we stop, stop talking about if these niggas want us or not? Excuse me, Kevin, this is not, <laughs> I'm, I'm talking to black women real, real quick. Can we stop talk? can we stop posting all day on TikTok because I I, re, I newly went to TikTok and I and I just kept seeing this. Black women, can we stop talking about if black men, if these successful black men want us or not? Like, can we just focus on us and we be successful and then we go out there and we decide who the fuck we want? Because what I've been seeing is I feel like I've been seeing men using that as an opportunity because they they've been hurt and and somebody doesn't put something to them and they've been using it as a as a way to come out and lash out and poke fun at black women and use it as a way to feel like they somebody or they something or so so for all you niggas that's doing that on tiktok where the fuck y'all at eat a dick go away nobody gives a shit about you so uh Nicki minaj i guess kevin Samuels was on her platform actually i thought she called up on his i glad i watched some videos to get more in depth uh no i did not watch the interview i had no interest when i saw the few clips and when he rated her a a nine nikki a nine fake booty uh fake boobies a nine i mean he's an image consultant but that was all cap she was actually more accurate in what she rated herself even though he doesn't believe she's supposed to be a user seven. She he gave Beyonce a eight, and I'm sure Beyonce has had some stuff done, but her doctor's a lot better. But I don't think Nikki looks better than Beyonce overall. Face maybe, like I get the whole aesthetics and the symmetry of her face and the eyes, whatever. I get that part, but I don't. You don't give Beyonce an eight and then Nikki a nine. Wildin', especially Nikki. You know, just had a baby too, so. Which is why I think she probably might have been confused about her dress size and the fact that her parts aren't real. But um, I saw that. He gave her a 9 after she more accurately gave herself a 7. And then the question about the successful black man with women. I'm like, my guy, like you on her platform, you got a moment to actually address a very valid question that has been out there in the ethos. You've had all types of think pieces and articles from a feminist or, um, for lack of a better word, from women who are the dust, right? Like you had a bunch of them speaking for us or simps like Boyce Watkins and others speaking for us. And you have this opportunity, you have this moment, and you either are scared to answer the question properly, but I don't know, or you, you tap dance around it, but his response was the the most Derek Jackson, Steve Harvey, Hill Harper, Boyce Walker's response to that question I've ever heard. Like, I got a thesaurus on a response to that question. And the way he took that moment and used it, I'm like, all right, there's no point in me watching it. You know, he's, he's going to do that. And I'm, it's like, I get it. He's on her platform. I, I don't like how, because remember when Kendra G went on his platform, she did the whole, well, I was nice and I was respectful. I'm like... As if she wanted cookies for doing that. <laughs> like, sisters want cool points because they go on other people's platform and they're not belligerent and combative. But then she went back on her own platform and did it. Which, to me, it looks like she's just jealous of Kevin in a way because she does the exact same thing that he does with women and dating and whatever. I mean, his is a little bit different, but she literally does the same thing and he has way more success to her and she's got she's been doing it a lot longer and she has the power of a radio station and other celebrities and connections behind her and yet he surpassed her but i don't know but um i, I wasn't expecting i know nikki can be combative and whatever and she acts like a goofball with the whole act she does i don't like that that's little airheaded stuff she be doing i guess she's sticking to the character but i don't like that so it's hard to take her serious when she does that 
Um, but yeah, Kevin definitely fumbled that question, and I didn't really have any interest in watching the rest of the interview. But um, I see a lot of niggas who need dads, aka the men's fair, was like, you know, upset. And then I seen the men's fair dads, you know, the Obsidians, and I didn't see O'Shea respond to it yet. I'm sure he did. Where these people are going to protect Kevin at all costs. That's what they said, really, right? I told you niggas need dads. But um, I get it. Obs- Obs- O'Shea said a long time ago, this is a business. Hence why he had no problem working with Paris Milan, who has content that's antithetical to black manosphere content. Like, it's the opposite. Like, they don't go together. This is why O'Shea will bring on Yvette Carnell. No, Yvette Ivory, my bad. Totally different. Um, a former swirler who has mixed kids but got black with a black dude. And she's speaking on issues in the black community like he let her on because she got big titties and you niggas are gonna go follow and like and subscribe and watch her videos and her content right it's a business they've made that clear obsidian has said himself you know his content is i don't listen consistently i know he was off youtube for a while he came back but he used to have the moniker the everyday average blue collar brother whatever whatever he don't say that no more right so it's weird that these dudes have been telling you that they want to go mainstream. They want to be bigger. That's when I mean, they've always been honest about that. It's never been a secret about that. That's been the goal. So, of course, when Kevin has an opportunity to go on Nikki's, who is probably the biggest person I've seen him go on, you know, you know, he was on Joe Budden, Joe Budden, that video, I think to this day is nine months old or six months old. It has like almost, I think five point something million video views or eight. I forget. But nonetheless, like, Joe didn't even want to, like, he was in conflict of doing it because he had women in his ear telling him, don't have him on. And obviously, he took a gamble. He was pussy. He didn't say anything in that video. But more of the story is that, yes, everybody who wants to go to the next level, who wants to go mainstream, you've seen even specific YouTubers not say certain things in their videos or tell you, don't say this in my comment section or don't talk about that because they don't want... To be affected by the algorithm they don't want their channels to be messed with that's just inevitable so i don't understand the confusion with the people who are following these guys they've told you from the jump that this is a business they want to make money they want to go mainstream and nobody's on youtube for over 10 years and they're doing the exact same content that they were doing 10 years ago i've just seen the video of the advice show in my damn msmc feed from the black news thing whatever he's not doing at least I don't think so. The content he was doing 10 years ago, you're going to grow. You're going to stop talking about certain things because it affects the algorithm. It affects the advertisers. And this isn't just a black male thing, though. Like, if black, if white boys are having this problem, you see what Joe Rogan's going through right now with Spotify. There's like a tightrope right now, but it's going to break on one end. Uh... Yeah, people are saying that the stock dropped like 200 million, blah, blah, blah. All stocks dropped. Zuckerberg lost a bunch of money because his weird old metaverse shit is going to probably <laughs> bring us to demolition, man, in, in real time. Uh, but that stock had it falling too. So it's not only Joe Rogan situation. I'm sure that's part of it. But then you got the people pulling out and all this other stuff. The left, CNN, all these networks are jealous of Joe Rogan because he has 11 million listeners a day. Or downloads or whatever and uh, CNN each one of the anchors can't even get a million Don Lennon uh, the chick who ate the crickets like none of them can get that right like Fox has like four shows that is better than um, like all of CNN shows uh, next is Rachel Maddow disease and she's stepping away for a little bit so we're seeing not just black men, but everybody who wants to be in this space is going to toe the line, and they're going to do what they have to do to sell out. If you want, that's one thing that's weird too. Is like we we have internalized this term "dust," right? Dusty. We sound like white supremacists, and I'm sure within the next few years, non-black folks are going to be using that word to describe black people pretty soon. We we created the word, the terminology, and we use it amongst each other, and it's not going to be long. Before non-black folks are going to be using that. But it's where how we surprised at folks selling out, quote-unquote, or getting the bag, or cooning for lack of a better word, tap dancing. But, like, well, they don't want to be dusty. What do you think they're going to do? 
<laughs> like black community can't sustain these people or the space we already heard that we saw the dapper damn video on a breakfast club where he basically said the same shit that kanye said the same shit to do who owned shea moister who formerly owned ebony magazine who doesn't own either of them now because negroes just don't have enough to sustain them businesses they want to go corporate they want to go be global they want to compete at a higher level and things are going to change to do that that's just the facts people are going to quote unquote sell out it might be unfortunate but that's what it is and it is going to be a trade-off can you get a person that's going to toe the line i kind of like what like i root for the person who leaves the mainstream spot and go do their own thing after they get their bag though like Say what you want about Megyn Kelly, but she was at Fox. She quit MSNBC. Fox tried to throw a bunch of money at her. She's like, no, nah, I'm going here. Which didn't make sense because she said they were giving her a bunch of opportunities, but let she have more time at home, which didn't make sense. But she said some dumb shit about blackface, and they got rid of her. She canceled her. Boom, she's gone. But they still had to pay her ass to leave. <laughs> right? So now she's on YouTube with the rest of us. But she has a whole bunch of money from Fox still, a whole bunch of money from MSNBC, or I mean CBS, wherever she was at. And now she's on YouTube and Patreon and private, you know. I respect that. I like that. Glenn Beck, I remember when Charlamagne was trying to like uh, shit on The Blaze, saying who listens to The Blaze. Like that's what people who are company people do, who are still attached to, uh, you know, a network. They do that to belittle people. But I'm like, like that's corny to me when you do that. Like, that's the goal. Like, that's the only way you get some sort of freedom. And you remember the debate between Joe Budden, which we have to recalibrate that now after seeing what happened with Rory and Maul. And Joe, all this creator content talk, and he was hiding the numbers. But in that debate, you know, Charlemagne was the company man and partnership versus ownership. But Glenn Beck owns his ship, right? And he it took some hits and falls, whatever, but he's sustainable and he can afford to hire people and do all those things i respect that more than trying to go but these are people who went mainstream first he was getting paid crazy money at fox first just like mac and kelly was at getting paid crazy money at fox first um but now they have their own thing going on and and they i mean their boss bosses are obviously still on these networks and platforms and Again, the attacking these people and trying to get them canceled or whatever is only going to end up pushing them to the other side. But even that, the alternatives like Gab and uh, the shit that Trump's trying to do, like they still have platforms. They still have their, uh, you know, advertiser friendly codes of conduct, or whatever. There's still people who've been canceled and kicked off for certain things. So I think this shit is inevitable at the end of the day. Um, yes. Kevin is trying to go mainstream. Kevin gave the most bullshit answer to Nikki's question about black men and black women. He could have just broke it down for once and for all and went with the whole. Even though the people who don't, they're going to oversimplify it to colorism or self-hate. Like, that's just the go-to. Like, that's what Boyce does all day, every day. Like, he just posted something about Kanye and the chick that he's with. And they were showing an article about Drake bought the chick that Kanye's dating right now, a Birkin bag or some dumb shit like that. And Boyce posted that on Twitter talking about why is there so many of these black men with money? Like just because that's his audience. That's his fan base. No matter how many women have worked with Boyce and done said he don't pay them and he treat them wrong and he'd be doing on dirt and all that. For whatever reason they still follow him and but that type of pandering he does is why he's at where he's at. And it looked to me in that moment Kevin gave that type of an answer. And I'm looking at some of the videos from other men in the YouTube spaces who are going to defend Kevin at all costs. They're defending the video because they have the same agenda to go mainstream. I see Dennis talking about Nikki is a nine. I don't care. Nobody say I'm like, dog, no. Dennis's girl looks better than Nikki, and I don't think his girl's a nine. <laughs> like, get the freak out of here. But, uh, yeah, uh, it's inevitable. People are trying to go mainstream, yo. They're going to not say things honestly how they really feel that's just the nature of the beast it is what it is i'm not shocked or surprised by it. i know people were in their feelings when um kevin did the video with uh what's her face uh the girl the thoughts the mixed chick whatever her yeah you know what i'm talking about nasty chick they got to do the young dude 
got her pregnant and she divorced him like a year later. But Brittany Gra- Renner, yeah, her. People were in their feelings about that, talking about Kev sold out, whatever, what mainstream might. Uh, duh. <laughs> like, that's been the goal from day one. They've always told you that. That's what changed the game with the Manosphere stuff is there are a whole bunch of black people on YouTube, black men who were on YouTube, Pink Elephant, Dan Freeman, AK Avenue, Rants, Test those boys from over 15 years ago that most of them aren't there anymore, but like this is before YouTube was a business and where you can make some money on it. This next wave, the O'Shea's, Tommy and all that, they made it a business. And it's funny too, because I remember um, when Tommy, I predicted that whole shit. It was not, I guess, hard, but you knew that Tommy was going to be jealous of the success that Kevin Samuels got because he did that to everybody. He didn't just do it to Kevin Samuels. But I remember I saw that Kevin went on No Jumper. I'm like, oh, he going on Vlad 2.0, whatever. I didn't watch the video at the time. Then I saw, like, a week later, Kev did the Diamond Sharp connection. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, oh, shit, Tommy's going to be a little bitch and cry and moan about... You know, I hit, I was here first, and I did this, and I did that, even though he wasn't. There are people here way before him that did the same content. He just was more, he, again, turned it into a business. And other people probably quit and went back to their real lives or had real jobs and had shit to lose, and they couldn't continue to do what they were doing. They couldn't afford to lose five, six, seven channels like Tommy did and kept going, whatever. But it was like clockwork. I said, oh, Tommy bought the, again, I hadn't watched anything from Tommy in over a year. I saw the the last thing I had watched of him was the video he did with the the ghetto chick from Atlanta trying to take one of those niggercrat seats from uh, Congress. I saw that interview, but then boom, I'm like, oh, Tommy about to crack a little bitch because I'm seeing Kevin elevate and do other collabs with other content creators. And I'm like, oh, blah, 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 blah. Next thing I know, I see Solo TV 84. He's doing a, a segment about Tommy's rant or whatever. And then boom, Tommy's on Solo TV 84. Crying and bitching and whining and talking about why he's jealous of Kevin Samuels, whatever. He does what I do, but he's just more effeminate, blah, blah, blah. That shit was all predictable. And I think that that's probably one of Tommy's biggest issues is he couldn't go more mainstream. So, and he can't go any further in what he's doing. He probably got more money, you know, between his investments and all that. That was what he was on. So, to before showing his stocks and whatever. But I'm sure he has money, but he can't go any further than where he's went to because he's just too controversial, too toxic, right? A lot of people stop listening to Tommy because of that very same reason. So, yeah, you going to probably get a bunch, the more collabs that Kevin does, the more success he gets, probably going to get a lot more cupcake responses like you saw in that interview. And again, watch all these dudes who want to see that happen and him go mainstream. They're going to defend it. And they're gonna, you know, I've seen some people making videos, well, y'all missed the point, and bring up other shit. Like, no, we can walk with you gum at the same time. He had an opportunity to nail that specific question in the head and break it down and talk about proximity and talk about, like, the reality that this is not even an issue. And you can't judge this shit based on what you see in the perception in the media. Like, he could have really broke that down. Like, we've been doing on YouTube the last 10, 15 years. And he chose not to. Maybe he's not equipped to answer that question. Maybe he was starstruck himself and didn't want to go there. I don't know. But he fumbled that question. 100%. And if he ever goes on any daytime show or gets a talk show, it's going to get worse. Just brace yourself. You need to find a new dad. Because <laughs> he's not going to be consistent and be honest the way we want. Remember, like I remember The Daily Show had that thing where... They had Common and Charles Blow, the gay dude, I don't know why he was on there, and a bunch of other comedians, and the black dude asked them all, and I'm not going to post that clip because Common sense will be copyrighting that shit, but I, he asked them like something about black women, and all those men were silent. They wouldn't, act, even the gay black dude wouldn't respond to the question that the dude, Larry, asked. His show got canceled because he was not, he's a better writer and behind the scenes guy, but he sucks at being in front of the camera, whatever. But um, all the black men just were silent. Now, he had that same segment with a bunch of black women. And one was a swirler. The other chick was the one chick that BBC Harvey that was like 50 before she finally settled down and got married or adopted some kids. They were able to be open and honest and candid and say what they want and how they really feel. And 
go into the whole sellout self hate arguments about black men. But the black men were quiet. They didn't even want to touch it. That's the space that Kevin is trying to elevate to and go to. And that's what's going to happen to him too. Again, black women can speak freely and say everything they want to want. Get off their chest. Nikki was able to get off what she wanted to get off in her little video. Why? You know, go get the money. Go get the bag so you can make a pick. <laughs> Exhibit A. Look what Nikki picked when she got her money and her success. Her choice. I have a different take on that. I see a lot of I seen it I, again. Don't watch no none of these old people videos no more. Stuff don't even be coming in my algorithm no more. I'd be in my political bag lately, just watching all that type of content. But I seen her post a meme of Nikki settled at 39 and uh, Rihanna settled at 33, and I'm just like I have a different take on that. I'll talk about that in a different video. But yeah, the goal for some of these dudes who made. YouTube a business and made money off of it after the ad apocalypse thingy dudes clutched their pros whatever and had to reinvent themselves and talk about it in a different manner that did happen but yeah who we at how long are we Ugh. <laughs> Nikki's a fucking nine get out of here like stop it like like come on remember when Beyonce did that picture with her cousin not really her cousin it was her cousin-in-law I think it's the Lawson chick it's really her family whatever she's not really blood related to the chick whatever but they were calling her Beyonce cousin that chick was bad that nobody was looking at Beyonce who we can all agree is an eight we was all looking at her cousin because she looked like a regular chick she didn't have the typical holiday. and this chick was a single mom of like two kids and a nurse but she was bad and we were all like Damn, who was her? Let's go follow her. Like, Beyonce who? But that was just a regular average looking chick. And she looked the better Beyonce in that moment. I don't know. This rating system is weird. But, and then too, like, Kevin going to say, because he didn't want to answer the question. Do you think men rate women? Yes, nigga, they do. <laughs> what do you mean, do we rate women? Yes, we give them numbers. It's our, our amongst ourselves. Absolutely. What is, what is he talking about? Why did he say that? Why did he lie like that in that moment? He didn't want to do it. And I get it. He wanted to be, you know, he wanted to come back. You can't go hard and be ruthless, but you can do this in a way and be cordial and have a tough conversation. People do it every day on their on podcasts and on the news and on the media. Like you don't have to it doesn't have to be ratchet the way that Kendra D G did after she left Kevin's show and went on her own show to do what she do. But she knew how to behave on his show and ask questions and talk and have a dialogue without being ratchet. Kevin and her could have had a better conversation. And he could have really answered questions, but he chose not to. I don't know why. It, was it a lack of preparedness? Was it, you know, was it, you know, I got future goals and I don't want to ruffle fellas here. I want to go to the next level. Either way, if he's whatever he says is going to get twisted by the mainstream and flipped and clips are going to become off of it. That's going to happen regardless. They don't. They don't like him. They don't want him around. They don't want him to succeed. But that's just my take on it. And again, I didn't watch the whole video. I don't know what all came out of their interview, but just me seeing those two clips and those questions that she asked, and then seeing a the response from the typical people on YouTube defending him. I'm like, obviously they have an agenda to go that's separate because now they're attacking their own followers, telling them, you know, y'all missed the point, or it's not about that, or focus on this, and blah, blah, blah. Like, nah, we can do all that and say that that question to the clips was horrible. His response was horrible. It's not as bad as when Fresh and Fit went and faced Britney. I didn't watch that video either. I do have a video about flagrant to Andrew Schultz and the Akash dude chastising Fresh and Fit. Like, that shit was so cringeworthy and trash. Like, like the podcast that's specifically not about being flagrant and going over the top and being as least politically correct as they could possibly be in an age when that's not an easy thing to do was trying to chastise fresh and fit like that shit was beyond me that shit was so cringeworthy seeing that shit you got Alex dude Puerto Rican black dude who they literally make fun of him for being a dude who don't date black women <laughs> but he was in there in the corner off my, off camera yeah but you but you was talking about our black queens like get the fuck out of here are y'all trying to go mainstream too now <laughs> like come on it's inevitable. It's coming for everybody. Like, 
one thing that Cyrus said in his video about Jordan Peterson, Jordan Peterson also angered, angered a lot of the Mass Fair dudes when he was on the Roommates podcast, and they hit him with the dating and the modern women thing and all that, and he gave a typical man up, um, safe answer of, no, it's your fault, man, you go out there and be better and, and do the right thing and be a cog in the wheel and all that, like, that was, I understand, he's been doing that his whole existence. Since he's been on Joe Rogan and got famous, like that, he's never deviated from that thing. Now, some people was like, he needs to stay in his lane. He's not been in the dating market. He's not American. Blah blah blah. If he was, he's gonna give that same because that's the status quo, typical response. That's what Andrew Schultz and Akash did to Fresh and Fit on that podcast. The same exact response to that topic because that's safe. That's what they're gonna. No man's not gonna tell you that. Even um. The, the dude he used to be on a man show which was a at its time it was that show where men could somewhat be honest and open and be goofy and do whatever they wanted to do but he's on CBS now or the Tonight Show whatever his name is and he's just a talking arm of the Democratic Party like married kids settled down say he sold out whatever but evolved again nobody is on YouTube over 10-15 years doing the same content that they did 10-15 years ago they had to upgrade it they had to silence it. What the hell is that dude name? I just was thinking about it. Uh, I don't like him. He's a fucking bitch ass li white liberal. Um, I gotta look it up right now. The Man Show. Who was that? Oh, was it was it wasn't Adam Carolla. Uh, yeah, Adam Carolla was on it. I think he went more conservative, and then the other dude. Oh, I don't call oh yeah, Jimmy Kimmel. That's the motherfucking name. I had to look up in real time because I'm like, his name is on my mind because that was one of the examples of people who used to be, and this is like he was on a show that was targeted towards men and a lot, and he took that cult following with him. Dr. Drew, um, Adam Carolla. It was a good show for its time for what it was supposed to be, but look at him now. Like, he ain't doing that no more. He, he, he did blackface and all types of crazy shit. Now he's safe. Got the bag on a Tonight Show. All he got to do is just repeat a bunch of liberal Democrat talking points, and he good. Hey, y'all want y'all want people to go mainstream? This is what's gonna happen. Shit is inevitable. If they firing white dudes from their own companies because the dude who did Mozilla or the antivirus software, he had to leave his own company because he donated money to a pro-family group, and the liberals found out. And he's like, no, you gotta go. Like, if that's happening to white dudes, what do you think will happen to black men? Seriously, what do you think will happen to black dudes? And if black people are up here, up and down, talking about dusty this, dusty that, you think people are not gonna sell out so they don't become the dust? <laughs> they gonna protect Kevin at all costs. They wanna, if YouTube say don't do this no more, they gonna not do it no more. They gonna attack their own listeners and subscribers and, and donators to stay on track, to get to that point of view. I'm done. This video is too long. Uh...